raising the IQ and bankrolls of sports bettors everywhere. The Better IQ Podcast is your source for sports betting information, analysis, and opinions. Learn. Bet. Win. Better IQ. Good afternoon and welcome to the Better IQ Podcast. I am your host, Andrew Lang. It's Wednesday. That means NBA talk uh, with our NBA expert, Aaron Renning. Don't forget, $5 Wednesday. We've been doing this uh, for the better part of the last uh, two months. All daily plays discounted uh, to just $5. You can get an unlimited amount. I know a couple of which are going to be of the uh, two-unit best bet variety. Those are Better IQ's top selection. So we encourage you, uh, while you're listening to the uh, podcast, be sure to check out that uh, Buy Picks page. And again, all daily plays discounted to $5. Any questions you're new to us, you want to sign up, you can do so on your own, or uh, we can walk you through it. Call us 1-866-923-8867 or email support at betteriq.com. Uh, All right, some pro hoops. Let's welcome in our guest, Aaron Rennie. ER, how are you this afternoon? Well, I'm doing good. It looks like a pretty good betting card. Got a number of, got some plays out there, Andrew. Got some uh, opinions and uh, feeling like I hopefully got some things turned around uh, in the NBA here as well. So, uh, uh, yeah, ready to talk about this stuff here today. Good matchup, uh, Eastern uh, Conference, but uh, missing a, a star player as uh, Kawhi is out as Toronto heads to uh, Indiana. Pacers open four and a half, now six across the board offshore, Aaron. Uh, total 217, 217 and a half. Yeah, good, um, good uh, point here. Obviously, Kawhi Leonard out uh, for the Toronto Raptors. This will be his third, I think maybe fourth game uh, that he'll miss in consecutive fashion, kind of Kind of strange, uh, to be honest. I mean, he's maybe just a little bit banged up, but it's more precautionary for him. Uh, the Raptors are seemingly doing whatever he wants uh, to appease him, make him happy, so he perhaps resigns uh, with the organization in the off season. So, uh, you know, he missed the game, and then they had a back to back. They scratched him last night, and they figured, well, he was just going to play tonight. But then they scratch him again, so he's going to be ready soon. Uh, for this team, but it certainly takes away from a marquee matchup. Uh, I think probably a matchup more of the Pacers uh, have been looking forward to. Uh, the Pacers, of course, um, in the last week or 10 days, uh, got embarrassed uh, by the, uh, certainly by the Philadelphia Sixers. Uh, I think that was last Thursday night. They got beat uh, 120 to 96. Remember, they were also embarrassed two weeks ago. Uh, tonight by the Boston Celtics, one thirty-five to one hundred eight. So some of the two, two of the better teams uh, in the Eastern Conference. It didn't go so good, but other than that, uh, they had played well, beating uh, the Knicks, Phoenix, Dallas, uh, Charlotte. So I think they are focused on this game here tonight. Fortunately, you got to pay a little bit of a tax. Uh, the number now up to six. Back-to-back situation here for the Raptors. That seemed a little bit rich uh, for what I. Uh, would be uh, kind of prefer and look at uh, the Raptors uh, playing pretty good basketball. They've won eight of their last nine straight up. Uh, haven't exactly been covering a number of those games. Uh, they also lost to Boston, the key game here last Wednesday night uh, for this team. So not really uh, any uh, super strong opinion uh, on this one. I guess if anything, uh, perhaps lean to the Raptors uh, getting six points, which certainly doesn't happen every day. How about Orlando? They head to uh, Brooklyn. You and I, Aaron, were uh, talking off air, and uh, perhaps a little bit soon, but uh, you know, for two organizations that have been so downtrodden over the last, uh, what, half decade plus, uh, playoff uh, talk is uh, Brooklyn uh, in Orlando and uh, crazy Eastern Conference. Orlando talking playoffs 20 and uh, 27, but nothing <laughs> out of the ordinary. But uh, Brooklyn of late, one of the hotter teams in the NBA, I believe they've won eight of their last 10 here, Aaron. These two teams met uh, last a week. Uh, got the Nets laying five and a half, two eighteen and a half to total. Yeah, the Orlando Magic on the fringe, fringe of the playoff race, if you will. But uh, this team still talking about it, and you know they had gone on a stretch, uh, Andrew, where they had lost, oh, I guess a good seven of their last nine, and then culminated with the loss uh, to uh, the uh, Milwaukee Bucks uh, on Saturday night. They lost that game one eighteen to one hundred eight, a ten point dog. Uh, in that contest, a number of games trending uh, over the total uh, for the Orlando Magic. And essentially, after that game, uh, the leader and center 
uh, Vukovic said, "Enough's enough." Uh, right now, on these upcoming upcoming three game road or upcoming three games against Atlanta, Brooklyn, and Washington. Of course, Brooklyn and Washington uh, kind of in that uh, playoff race in the Eastern Conference as well. Uh, basically, Vukovic said, "Every game is a game seven uh, for us." So we'll see how it plays out. So far, so good. Uh, for the Magic, uh, they beat Atlanta on Monday, one of their better games of the season. They win that game going away 122-103 uh, to 103, uh, as they, uh, of course, travel here tonight to Brooklyn. Uh, the Nets have been playing superb basketball. I kind of kicked myself for not betting this team more. Uh, right now, four straight wins against Boston, Houston, Orlando, and Sacramento. I haven't had this team power rated. Uh, all that highly uh, for whatever reason. Obviously, they beat the Celtics. They were undermanned. No Kyrie uh, in that game. They beat Houston. Uh, we're down by, uh, you know, eight points in that final minute and came back to win that game in overtime. They beat the same Orlando team uh, last week as well and going away on Monday as they beat the Sacramento Kings 123-94. to uh, The backcourt of Dinwiddie and Russell are both playing Tremendous basketball and really figured it out and playing uh, pretty well uh, together. But I like this team a lot. Uh, but with that said, uh, value is value. I do lean uh, towards the uh, Orlando Magic here tonight, although no, the, the numbers come down. It was six and a half um, earlier. Aaron Gordon's expected to play uh, for the Magic. Also would lean slightly uh, uh, under the total uh, in this matchup between these two here tonight. Clippers down in uh, Miami. This line's been uh, bouncing uh, back and forth. It was uh, six, and it was five and a half. Five seems to have settled in at uh, five and a half. Miami going to be the uh, home chalk. Two sixteen and a half the uh, total, Aaron. Interesting matchup uh, between these two teams. Uh, the Clippers played last night in Dallas. Uh, they get beat uh, in that contest. They ran into a little bit of a buzzsaw. DeAndre Jordan playing uh, playing um, against his former team uh, looked very good, and it's been rough uh, for this Clippers team. Right now, they have lost five of their last six games. They have failed to cover in five of their last six games, a little bit banged up. Lou Williams missed a couple of games. He returned last night uh, in Dallas, uh, maybe their most valuable player. Uh, Dan o- Gallinari has been out here. He's missed uh, two and a half games. He's expected to miss uh, once again tonight, uh, you can certainly see some of the firepower is missing for this team offensively. Clippers team that scored a ton of points all season long. Uh, their last three games, 94, 103, and 98. I think the schedule has been very tough uh, for this Clippers team. I mean, uh, right now, look at their last five games against Dallas, San Antonio, Golden State, Utah, and New Orleans. Certainly some of the better teams in the Western Conference now uh, catch a little bit of a break going against the Eastern Conference Miami team, a team that's you know kind of interesting to uh, take in and, and see the full effect right now. They have not been playing their best basketball, been actually betting this team uh, quite a bit. Uh, they are one and three straight up their last uh, four games. They got a cover on Monday against Boston. That game was tied at 50 at halftime before Boston had a huge uh, third quarter, Miami fires back uh, to uh, eventually get the point spread cover in that game. Big win for them uh, Saturday night against Chicago, 117-103. to The Bulls were off a Western Conference road trip. Good spot for Miami in that game. Dwayne Wade's last game in Chicago. Uh, a couple of tough losses as they were embarrassed last week against Milwaukee. Uh, watched, uh, bet them, watched a lot of that game against Detroit. Uh, some turnovers, couldn't make shots, couldn't make a free throw uh, in that game against Detroit. It was just uh, ridiculous from this team. I thought this was a little bit rich and kind of interesting. If you go back to the first time these two teams met, somehow, some way, early December, Miami went to the Clippers and won 121 to 98 uh, in L.A. I guarantee you the Clippers will remember that game. So I think this game will be a little bit closer. Uh, then that spread indicates. I expect. Uh, I would. I would bet the Clippers here plus the points. Hey, don't forget, it's a five dollar a Wednesday. Our guest here, Aaron Renning, he has two selections. So you're getting uh, not only a discounted rate on his daily play, but you're getting uh, double the action here. Uh, two plays in the NBA here for uh, tonight. 
uh, courtesy of uh, Aaron uh, Renning, up to shy of 10 units of uh, profit this season. Uh, you can pick that up on the uh, Buy Picks page at BetterIQ.com. A couple of games remain here, Aaron. Let's talk uh, Detroit and uh, New Orleans. Another uh, situation with a uh, key uh, star player out, that, of course, being uh, Anthony Davis. Looks like he's uh, out one to two weeks, according to my Don Best screen. Also got Andre Drummond. Uh, questionable, uh, according to, uh, again, my screen, concussion-type uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, got New Orleans a, a four-point favorite. Uh, high total here of a 223. What's your take? Uh, I would expect uh, Andre Drummond to play here tonight. Uh, he did participate in shoot-around. He didn't travel uh, to the game the other day on the road for the Detroit Pistons, uh, but he is in New Orleans. He participated in shoot-around. Uh, I would think uh, he's going to be able to go here uh, tonight for this team. So we'll see if it happens. Honestly, for him to miss a couple of games uh, might have been the best thing as he had looked extremely sharp. Let's watch quite a bit of Detroit here uh, of late. But the other day in Washington on Monday, uh, pretty uh, pathetic effort uh, for the Detroit Pistons. A little bit undermanned in that game. They got beat uh, 101-87. However, uh, anybody who's listened to me and certainly followed the podcast, Andrew, knows that I'm somewhat of a fan of this Washington team. I think there's kind of a buy sign uh, on that team uh, right now. So uh, they ran into a bit of a buzzsaw. Uh, they also got beat at the wire uh, by Sacramento on, on Saturday night. So uh, this is a team having a hard time figuring it out. Uh, certainly more losses than wins and turns into a key game here. Uh, tonight matched up against New Orleans. Now, uh, you mentioned Anthony Davis. Hard to f- envision more of a valuable player in the NBA than Anthony Davis, especially uh, when you figure this is a Pelicans uh, roster that's pretty thinned out, uh, not a ton of talent. Now, their first game without their star, they played very well against Memphis the other day. In fact, uh, on Martin Luther King Day, they go into Memphis and beat uh, the Grizzlies. 105 to 85 by 20 points. However, uh, we know that uh, this Memphis Grizzlies team is in dire straits. Uh, after that game, they somewhat waved the right, the white flag, uh, said Conley and Gasol are available. They have just had a hard time. The roster is not that good to begin with. So, uh, you know, you get that kind of bump their first game without a star, but Davis is still extremely valuable. I mean, Somehow, uh, Okafor started for Davis and had a huge game against Memphis. Uh, he scored 20 and 10. I would not expect that to happen here uh, tonight. So, especially if they get Drummond back, but even Blake should be able to have a Blake Griffith should be able to have a good game here against Detroit. Uh, I thought this was a little bit rich. Uh, would look here towards the Pistons. In fact, uh, might even look to uh, bet a little bit on the money line with the Pistons here tonight. Last game, uh, ESPN, the uh, nightcap is uh, Denver's in uh, Utah. And uh, out of the ordinary, Aaron, it looks as if both teams are at uh, full strength. It seems as if uh, our analysis on the uh, NBA, half of it, if not more, is uh, trying to handicap teams missing uh, key uh, players. But uh, Utah opened three, now four across the uh, board, 216 the total. Well, you got that right, Andrew. I always do look forward. I love it when games are, you know, they're, are full strength and both teams are ready to go. And for the most part, uh, you are correct here. Uh, Utah still without uh, a couple of their backup point guards, but yeah, for the most part, the rotation guys are ready to go uh, in this one. Rubio returned. You know, it's funny. Utah had been playing very good basketball. You know, the schedule had finally lessened for this team. They had won six straight, uh, six straight, and then Rubio comes back in limited fashion uh, the other night, and they actually get beat by Portland, one hundred nine uh, to one hundred four. So, would expect a better effort from this team. Uh, here tonight. Meanwhile, Denver has kind of picked up stream, uh, steam. Uh, you know, they, yeah, they get Harris back, Millsap back, finally Barton back uh, into the fold. Certainly priced uh, in big category. I mean, look at their last two games as they play Chicago and Cleveland, uh, favored by a combined 31 and a half points. But it didn't matter as they outscore Chicago 135 to 105, Cleveland 124 to 102. Uh, the schedule picks up in a huge way uh, here tonight against a Utah team uh, still obviously uh, battling. I couldn't really figure out any motivational factors uh, for this game. The total uh, was kind of right there for me as well, Andrew. So if anything, I'll be taking in watching this game, maybe look uh, for an in-game bet. Uh, but uh, yeah, it just didn't get there from a betting perspective. 
Aaron, before we uh, let you uh, go, uh, Super Bowl, uh, plenty of time. You know, again, they got the uh, two weeks. They try to string it out as uh, long as uh, possible. We've seen uh, New England take the uh, early uh, money, and uh, I was talking to Waz, a couple other uh, guys, uh, in terms of, you know, what's the question? Is New England, you know, everyone who liked New England, they're already done, and you got a bunch of people like the Rams. They're just kind of holding pat, waiting for that uh, three. Waz spotted it yesterday at uh, South Point. Uh, they actually moved to uh, three, but it was there for all of, according to my screen, 18 uh, minutes. But uh, uh, still got time, Aaron. But what are your initial thoughts here on the uh, the Rams-Patriots Super Bowl matchup? Uh, yeah, it was well, interesting. I was talking with Waz. I actually had told him that it, that game had, had kind of moved. I'm not sure when you talked to him. But, yeah, it, it moved very briefly. Chris Andrews, uh, the sportsbook director for South Point, actually tweeted it out. I'm uh, kind of upset I missed it, and that's the thing about the South Point. They just run three flat, so it wasn't three minus any juice. I'm surprised it lasted uh, as long as it did. But there's definitely been uh, some play here uh, for New England. If anything, I would probably prefer the Rams, uh, not really at two and a half, though. Um, I mean, you're you're correct. I mean, the New England kind of was getting bet against against Kansas City. Everybody said they're road woes, this and that. Uh, they come out and pretty much dominate. Kansas City minus two in turnovers, but dominated the box score. Uh, one key matchup to watch. I'll be writing about this. Uh, New England, that power running game, uh, has been really good, and they've kind of latched onto that uh, down the stretch uh, for this playoff run. However, uh, matched up against this Rams defense with Donald, and of course, Sue has been played very well on that interior defense. Uh, that Rams run defense has been tremendous in the playoffs. Uh, against uh, the Saints and Dallas, uh, two of the better rushing uh, attacks in the NFL. Uh, they hold the Saints to 48 yards and 21 carries, 2.3 yards per carry, and Dallas 50 yards and 22 carries, 2.3 yards per per, uh, per play as well. So I think that's going to be the key matchup uh, in this Super Bowl. So looking forward, I mean, in the end for me, I mean, these are probably my two favorite coaches and Sean McVay and Bill Belichick. Uh, really hard for me to bet against either one of these teams, uh, but the initial blast would be here for me towards the Rams. Betting numbers, not betting uh, teams, as they always uh, say. We'll have more uh, Super Bowl analysis here. Again, we have, uh, what, a week and a half until the uh, the big uh, game. We'll be talking uh, prop bets and uh, get all the guys in here and breaking down the uh, game. In the meantime, it's a $5 Wednesday. All daily plays, discount to 5 bucks. Check out that Buy Picks page at BetterIQ.com. Get as many as you want. Uh, Lock the load, including Aaron Rennie with the two NBA selections. Okay, that'll wrap up uh, today's show. Uh, Thanks for uh, listening, and we'll be back again tomorrow.